Everyone on our team feels lucky to have Jonathan Stupar playing with us, and not just because he's a really good tight end. During the offseason, John was diagnosed with a potentially fatal heart abnormality. Surgery was risky, but thankfully he pulled through and made an amazing recovery. Jonathan Stupar is your Student Athlete of the Week. Going into to last year at camp, you know, um, I was stronger, I was faster, you know, I was, I was more hungry, uh, and, uh, you know, just going in there, you know, I just tried to do my best all the time, and, uh, you know, it was really paying off in camp, you know, I was doing well, I was doing real well, and uh, until the second to last day of camp when I broke my foot. There's no words that can explain it, you know, I mean, he, he wanted it so bad to get in there and play, and then, you know, his foot just breaks. That really just hurt, because... You know, I, I had so much expectation for that year, and for it to kind of almost just go down the drain, it felt like was just kind of crushing. You know, as I was recovering from the second foot operation, you know, we went to Boise um, and stuff, and then we went home for Christmas break. I was watching TV, and my vision started just going. It started just going to where at a point where it was, I could just see the TV and basically what was in the middle of the TV and everything else was black. And it was kind of really scary at the time because it's not really normal. And, uh, you know, I just kind of blinked my eyes real hard and shook my head, slapped myself around, you know, what's going on. And it didn't go away. So I went up to my mom and dad and I was like, you know, I kind of lost my vision. I can't really see except for what's in front of me. And, being the good parents they are, they rushed me to the hospital and uh, to the emergency room. And I had some blood work done and uh, had a CAT scan, and they didn't find anything. He came back to school. We saw him in the training room, and I asked if he hadn't had an EKG done, which had not been done, which, which is fine. I mean, you know, they thought it was more central nervous system related. Got an EKG, and the EKG showed the conduction abnormality known as Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. Wolf-Parkinson's-White syndrome is... Um, it's a, it's a case where in your heart you have, pretty sure you have four circuits that, uh, that there's a sequence that goes through them and it's, it stimulates your heart to beat. And I had two of them. Uh, so like say the sequence was A, B, C, D, I would have like two Bs. And what it would do is when it would send the pulse, it could go to A to either B and down, or what it could do is short circuit. If it goes through both of them, my heart will beat twice as fast which is really bad, or it could short circuit and my heart could just stop. I mean, it was just, we came back from winter break and you know, he was like, yeah, my, my heart's messed up. And we're like, what? You know, what, what are you talking about? I wasn't allowed to do a jumping jack, a push up, you know, they were like, don't do anything. You walk everywhere you go, you drive to every class, you, you know, nothing. Then I went and saw uh, Dr. Malzi uh, at the University of Virginia Hospital. You know, I really didn't know uh, how severe it was until he sat down with me and you know, he told me, you know, it's a, it's a blessing, you know, it's a miracle that you broke your foot. Because, I mean, if, when, if you were out there working out, trying to get back into shape, you know, you could have dropped. And, you know, I was like, what do you mean dropped? He's like, probably had like a 90% chance of dying. And, you know, that's when it, that's when it hit me. I was like, wow, <laughs> I won't do a jumping jack, I promise. Yeah, the procedure is a risky procedure. I mean, essentially putting a catheter through your high blood vessel, you push this catheter into the heart and you map the electrical circuitry of the heart, all right, essentially. And then you find that bad pathway and then you zap it. Before the surgery, I remember Dr. Malinsley telling my dad, you know, you know, there's a chance that he might not come out of this. And, you know, it's too, when you say that to a father, you know, my dad told me, he was like, you know, when I told him about it, he was like, are you sure you want to have the surgery? And I was like, dad, they won't let me play football again unless I have the surgery. He was like, John, do you want to have the surgery? A risky procedure, but very successful. And thanks to Dr. Mines, we were able to get him, you know, get him back on the field. And as you can see, he's playing well this year and great kid, you know, and uh, we're fortunate. Normally they burn it off, but it was so close that they, uh, they ended up freezing it off. Uh, so he, they had to hold it on there uh, on the bad circuit for I think it was five minutes without moving on a microscopic thing which uh, takes some uh, nerves, and uh, you know, he did it. He got it on the first try, it took about two and a half hours, uh, woke up, and uh, I was fine. We're lucky that we have the opportunity to do it, Virginia, you know. We've got the EKG machine in the training room, and 
we're just blessed with so many, so many good medical facilities around here that we're able to do it. And so many places don't have that, those blessings and, and the luck that we have, that we have all this here at Virginia, that we're able to get it diagnosed, send them to the right people, get them back on the field in a month. He's just getting off of foot surgery too. So it was just, you know, we were helping him before with, uh, with his foot and he was always on crutches. Now, uh, you know, he's just had surgery on his heart. So uh, we were kind of getting routine with this. So it's not something you really want to get used to. He's gone through so much in such a short amount of time. And now to see him out there excelling, you know, catching big passes, making big blocks, it's, it's really, uh, it's really a good experience. He has a great outlook on life. And after his surgery, he came home and he said, it's all better, you know, and smiling. That's the beauty of John. You know, he's, he's, he's always going to bring a smile to your face, no matter what, rain, snow, or sleet. I go out there every day now knowing that there was a chance that I wouldn't be playing football, that I wouldn't be here, you know, and it's, it took something like that for me to realize how, how you know, precious life is and how how great uh, of an opportunity I have here to play college football. He's always happy living in the moment, and uh, it's always fun to be around a guy like that. Sometimes we joke with him and say, you know, you could, you could be a cartoon character. You know, you just, people see you and, you know, they start laughing and, you know, you just, you just bring a smile to everyone's face. You, you never know when your time's up, you know. You never know uh, when your clock's going to stop ticking, and uh, it's just, it's just amazing, you know, to go out there every day and compete in the college level and, and play football, and I cherish every moment of it.